What's good with the YouTube of Convicts Perspective? It's your boy, Big Flacco. As always, smashing, dashing, sliding on through with my co-host, Big Senor Rojo. You already know what time it is. A little bit of energy. Sorry, here we go. We're going to go get straight to it, man. We got an interesting article, man, that discusses a little bit about the Texas Mexican Mafia. And the reason why we decided to uh, address this is because of the recent events that have happened in like the last 12 to 15 years to where now the NF and Texas MA can coexist on the same yard. Um, I've been told by several people who have done time in the feds that they are allowed and they are supportive of all Texas cars, whether it be the Texas Syndicate, uh, Texas MA, and Barrio Azteca. That all these cards, all the Texas cards, even the Texas ABT, Aryan Brotherhood of Texas, all associate with the NF. Tongo so yeah, all, all, all these little crews in Texas. I don't know if it has to do with the Texas MA having a conflict at one time with the, with the Mexican the Mexican Mafia Cali faction, because that did happen. That was a big, big time war that they had that was going on, man, to where they, I think they got separated. And now, because you know what it comes down to is an enemy of yours is an enemy of mine. So basically, like, there's pictures of them all in the yards together, kicking it, spreading together, and getting along and working relationships. So I was also told by another person, man, that, They've done some fed time and, and they know about all these different groups. And, um, you know, a lot of times we believe that maybe the, uh, you know, the Latin Kings may be the most similar in, as far as in functions compared to the North Daniels. But as far as within the NF, the one group that may be parallel and is kind of similar in their structure, as far as they have lieutenants and captains and generals as well, would be the Texas MA. So we're going to break down this article real quick and then give our perspective. All right, man, this is what we found. It's actually a U.S. Justice Department press release. And we'll get right into it. The Texas Mexican Mafia, or Spanish term La M, which translates literally to the M letter in the English alphabet. The Texas Mexican Mafia was self-dedicated to the pursuit of organized criminal conduct, principally through drug trafficking, extortion, and assault. The Texas... <laughs> The Texas Mexican Mafia, including its leadership, membership, and associates, constituted an enterprise that is a term defined in Title 18 United States Code Section 1961-4, that is, a group of individuals associated in fact. This enterprise constituted an ongoing organization whose members functioned as a continuing unit for a common purpose of achieving the objectives of the enterprise. This enterprise is engaged in and, and its activities affected interstate and foreign commerce. The Texas Mexican Mafia was formed in the early 1980s by prisoners incarcerated in the Texas state prison system. The organization's original members joined together behind bars to protect one another from the violent behavior of non-member inmates and to more effectively engage in organized criminal activity. The original members drafted a constitution governing the organization and declared San Antonio, Texas, its capital. Upon release from incarceration, members and prospective members were ordered to report to the organization's leadership overseeing their individual hometowns. As membership grew and the organization expanded inside and outside of the prison system, the organization established a presence in an increasing number of towns throughout Texas. The Texas Mexican Mafia was governed by a strict code of conduct that expressly stated that the enterprise was a group devoted to crime and violence. This code was enforceable by death or serious bodily injury. One could only become a merecido or worthy one, that is, an official member of the Texas Mexican Mafia after being asked to join by a padrino or sponsor and by participating in serious criminal acts. The traditional threshold requirement for membership into the organization is the carrying out of a contract or cameo on behalf of the organization, oftentimes involving the murder of an enemy. This code absolutely forbade any member's cooperation with law enforcement officials. The Texas Mexican Mafia was organized in a hierarchical form that included a president, vice president, generals, captains, lieutenants, sergeants, and soldiers, also known by the Spanish term for soldier soldados. Prospective members closely associated with the organization include prospectos or prospects, 
and esteemed freedmen or non-member soldiers that have not yet risen to the level of prospects. It's like skinas. Okay. Oh yeah, I know that. It's spelled weird. P S Q I N E. Associates who spent considerable time with the gang were known as fuertes or hearts. Members holding rank above that of soldier are recognized as the leadership of the Texas Mexican Mafia. And it is the directives of the members to be carried out by soldiers and prospective members. Many members and associates of the Texas Mexican Mafia signified their membership and allegiance to the organization by wearing distinctive tattoos reflecting the letter M. For example, MAM or 13, Mexican MA or displaying images representing Aztec culture and mythology. These tattoos were oftentimes designed to be kept hidden beneath clothing lines, ending at the collar and sleeve to avoid detection by law enforcement officials. Certain tattoos are only allowed to be worn by official members. One of the organization's principal activities and sources of income is extortion. According to the organization's constitution, the Texas Mexican Mafia impose and collect a 10% tax on the proceeds of all illegal drug sales by non-members for the privilege of selling narcotics in areas under the organization's control. This tax or extortion payment was known as the dime or the 10%. Failure to pay the tax could result in robbery, serious bodily injury, or death. In exchange for paying the 10% tax, on drugs, the Texas Mexican Mafia provides the taxpayer protection from robbery, assistance in collecting drug debts from users, and a degree of protection from competing drug dealers inside and outside of the prison system. Another principal source of income for the Texas Mexican Mafia is trafficking in illegal drugs. Operating in Southwest Texas afforded the organization two opportunities to profit from narcotics localized sale, as well as national and international drug trafficking. Like conventional street drug distribution, members and associates obtain large quantities of narcotics and, distrib and distribute them for localized sale. The illegal drugs distributed by the enterprise included heroin, cocaine, and marijuana, as well as methamphetamines, are purchased, sold, and distributed in interstate and foreign commerce. Additionally, members of the gang also provide firearms to the international narcotics traffickers located in Mexico as part of their ongoing business relationship with certain cartels in Mexico. The purpose of the enterprise known as the Texas Mexican Mafia includes the following. To enrich its members through, among other things, drug trafficking, extortion, weapons trafficking, and other violent crimes to preserve and protect the power and profits of the Texas Mexican Mafia through the use of intimidation, violence, threats of violence, and assaults. To promote and enhance the Texas Mexican Mafia and its members' activities. To keep its victims in fear of the Texas Mexican Mafia and its members in compliance with its rules through violence and threats of violence. The methods, manners, and means of the enterprise. Among the means and methods by which members and their associates agree to conduct and participate in the affairs of the enterprise are as follows. Members of the enterprise and their associates obtain money through the direct distribution of illegal drugs and through the imposition and collection of extortion payments, the dime, from, from drug distributors in exchange for authorization from the Texas Mexican Mafia to sell illegal drugs in any particular area. Members of the enterprise and their associates obtain money by engaging in illegal acts, including the threatened and actual use of force, violence, and intimidation, including but not limited to assault, extortion, robbery, kidnapping, and other acts of violence, all of which are conducted as part of the operations and management of the said enterprise. Members of the enterprise and their associates protect the activities and affairs of the enterprise from competing, competing individuals, rival gangs, and others through the use of illegal means, including the possession of firearms and engaging in, the, engaging in acts of violence and threats of violence and by coordinating with Mexican drug cartel members, including individuals associated with Los Zetas drug trafficking operation. Members of the enterprise and their associates plan and coordinate the activities of the enterprise to regular meetings where the operations of the enterprise are discussed. 
members of the enterprise contribute funds to specifically designated individuals who maintain possession of those funds and act as a bank, loaning out money to members and associates who require funds. Wow. It's a little more complex than the one we did yesterday. See the similarities I was telling you? If, if, if you were to take a group out of all these organizations, um, I'm gonna say Mexican organizations because I know they have different groups that operate differently. Um, this is probably the closest in that mirrors and resembles the NF. Yeah. From the constitution to the banks, to the to the uh, the ranking system, you know they have lieutenants, generals, yeah. captains, vice president, president. You know what I mean? And you know even the structure to go take out take over territories. Um, their constitution seems a little bit more. Uh, you know what I mean? Criminally based, period. It's just all criminal activities. You know what I mean? There's no trying to build up the organization. There's no trying to become self-supportive. This is about power and control. That's the only difference I see between them and the NF, which kind of makes sense why they get along so well. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said before, like anybody that's been in the feds will tell you that the NF, North Daniels, they run with Texas cars. They all get along. You know, there's been some disputes between the, the uh, Texas MA and you know the rather MA from out from out there in California, and um, it got really bloody. A lot of lot, lot of bodies were dropping. It got really serious, and um, from there they ended up getting separated. Now allegedly there's a truce right now between the Texas MA and the other MA, but they're not really coexisting on any of the yards, from my understanding. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, someone please correct me. But um, I got a question for you, Rojo, since you you know you're out there in Tejas, right? What what's the other name for the Texas MA? I know there's another name. I I can never pronounce it. Oh, man, they, they go by all kinds of things, bro. Mexican M.A., Mexican. Texas M.A. MA. But it's like, it's, it's, it's like Me Mexican Nemi or something like that? Yeah, Mexican M.A. It's, yeah, they, something. They spell it all in one word, so it kind of looks different. You know what I mean? Okay, okay, okay. But, uh, yeah, there's all kinds of names and nicknames for it, man. I don't know which one they use officially, you know, or, or ones that were just given to them. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard to say, bro. But I can see their whole st structure of why, like, the Tango Blast is, is such a, a common enemy for them. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Tango's, Tango's not – see, they don't – see, the thing with Tango, man, is they don't consider themselves a prison family, prison gang, fama, however they, you know, describe it with whatever word they use. And, and to a certain extent, they are and they aren't. You know, they're not really super organized and have an ultra, you know – define chain of command or structure rules and regulations but i mean you know if it if it hops it's green it's on the ground it's got four legs i mean it's probably a frog you know what i mean like they're still controlling stuff they're still using violence they're still hustling so you know it, it self-identification and what people place on you are two different things you know i would i would i would i would call them a gang personally i would call them a prison gang but that's just me. That's my the only my opinion. You could crucify me if you want. But the 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 other ones, man, like the Texas Syndicate, the Mexican MA, you know what I mean. The the those guys definitely have similar structure to whether it be us or the Arizona or or the regular MA or or whoever it might be. They definitely have an organizational overtone to what they strive for. You know what I mean. But uh. Tongo's just deep, bro. They're just extremely, extremely deep, but they're not like, they're, it, it's not, man, I, I call them, I call them a gang, but they're more like how California would call you, you know, you got disruptive groups versus organized prison gangs. But the thing with them, bro, is they're just not, they're not governed, bro. They're kind of like just a, a whole group of dudes who stick together, but have their own agenda. You know what's a trip though, right? Is you know, some of these Texas cars, these organizations, they're are they at war with each other? Like do the TS and the MA, do they uh, get along? I mean, the last I heard was Tongo and Texas Syndicate. That was like the, the worst one. It's kind of like cool now because all the syndicate dudes were locked down. You know, I don't know if it's changed since then or whatever. Like, all, they had all the syndicate slam, and all the tongos were running around. I don't know if that's still the case. But um, so, so, 
So yeah, I mean, there's a, there's animosity between them groups, man, but I don't know how it plays out, man. From what I understand, it plays out differently at different locations. Well, I know in the feds, it seems like they're all in one car. Yeah. Like the Texas runs under one car. And I think for a minute, man, like even Cali, everybody in Cali ran, ran under one car, believe it or not. You know what I mean? I heard the feds used to be totally different, man. Operation Black Widow kind of shook things up a little bit, man. So, yeah, I'm just trying to grasp a little bit of understanding about it, man. Um, you know, uh, very interesting article. I mean, you know, I, I know we discussed Latin Kings. You, you've been around them. Um, but this kind of hierarchy structure, constitution, uh, um, set regulars, what do you think about that? See, um, as far as the Latin Kings go, man, I only affiliated with them on the streets. I never really had no insight as to how they function behind bars. You know what I mean? But on the streets, extremely similar to the homeboys. I wouldn't know the difference. You know what I mean? At all, really. The only difference would be is like, there'd be more Puerto Ricans, Cubans, you know what I mean? Dominicans versus people of Mexican descent. That would be like the only difference. But as far as like, just how, just style, get down, everything's real similar. I don't know how they do it behind the wall so much, except from what I've seen on television. You know what I mean? And uh, it seems like it varies quite a bit behind the bars, but you got to remember they're dominant in other States. You know what I mean? So, Obviously, the style to get down the politics and everything is going to be different, man. But I'm just saying as far as like, you know, just hanging out with certain groups of people, if, if you had 10 Latin Kings from Houston, you know, in my time and you had 10 Northerners and you just went from one house to another, there wouldn't be a lot to change except, man, you see a lot of gold and black in one house and a lot of red and black in the other house. That'd be the that'd be the only thing. But uh, Latin Kings lost a lot of their... Uh, stronghold in texas man and, and everybody did with the the extreme rapid growth of tongo you know what i mean tongo is just so dominant man it's hard to get a foothold you know i mean san antonio is its own entity you know and san antonio's always going to be san antonio you know what i mean i think it's got like the second largest latino population outside of la and they're going to do their thing, you know, but uh, so they would have to be they, they would have to be feuding out there in the streets if you think about it, because I don't know how you're going to have territorial claims overlap with other groups like that. Yeah, see, you know I, I, got a, I got a homeboy who's a TS, an active TS member of somebody I grew up with. I also got homeboys that are active Tongos and they don't like each other at all. But I mean, I don't know how that, you know, I could I could ask, bro. Um, they're They're kind of reserved on what they say. But uh, I could ask and see, you know, current currently what's going on, bro. But uh, they they don't like each other at all, because what the the TS looks at Tongos, kind of like dropout TS associates. You know, like if, if the Northanians walked away from the NF, that's how the the NF would look at them. That's how the TS kind of looks at the Tongos, because TS used to be dominant, like. You know, the first time I lived out here back in the, the, the 80s and, and, you know, first couple of years of the 90s, TS was the dominant group. That's all you heard was TS, TS. And everybody I ever met was TS, you know, when I was in county jail down there and shit. But um, Tongo is the, the biggest group in Texas. As far as dominance, man, that's going to go to local areas, you know, local prisons and everything. Body Estate has got their place sold up. Tri-City Bombers got their place sold up. You know, San Antonio's, San Orijones, they got their place sold up. But when it comes in prison, I think it's going to just rely on who happens to have the deepest car. And most of the time, that's going to be the tongues. And a lot of these guys are getting, they, they st are still validating these guys as well. Yeah. So a lot of them are locked up in their facility, their shoe facilities there. So it probably, probably plays out a lot different in the, in the feds, man. Because I noticed the, the bigger groups like the uh, TS in the, in the Texas MA, they have a lot more federal indictments because they're conducting organized type of, you know, rackets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That are for a criminal organization to where you will see less Tongos and less of these other groups unless they're doing over the border stuff. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Barrio Estecas, bro, they got a big ass, a big hood, bro, like a big group organization, however you want to refer to it, bro. They control a lot of that border, you know, so there's obvious advantages to being friends with them. You know, same with Tri-City Bombers. You know what I now, mean? Do, it, do any of these orders sewed up. So the NF is smart with being friends with Texas because, you know, in, in theory, they don't have no friends in Southern California. They don't have no friends in Arizona. I'm really not too sure about the political climate with the New Mexico individuals. 
but having that one little border from from Brownsville to El Paso, you know, with friendlies, that's a that's a good move. Well, yeah, that is a good move. I think I think uh, uh, I think it kind of happened by accident, though. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it was planned. Like I said, the same thing that happened with the NF and MA is the same thing that happened with the Texas MA and MA. They got off with each other. They had their conflicts. And so I think that's why they're able to coexist. I mean, we've seen a picture of, of, of what Happy and Bird kicking it with uh, TS, Texas MA, and some Barrio Azteca. Mm -hmm. I mean, so they're out there on those jars chilling. You know what I'm saying? Networking, you know I mean, building relationships. And I'm probably sure that they're seeing similarities in these groups. And I think the common theme here is Texas having problems with the MA and Sureños. Apparently, they're supposed to be a truce now. But for a minute, it was cracking off between these groups, man. I don't know where Arizona plays, plays into this, man. Um, I think that their their percentage, their faction is is a lot more or less than the feds. I think it's more Cali based. But I do know Cal, I do know the Cali MA and Arizona MA do have a truce as far as in the feds in the state now. Um, no, no, it's kind of interesting topic, man. I just thought I thought the parallel similarities is what makes the Texas MA kind of interesting, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not too sure, man. I'm gonna try to. I'll reach out to some people and try to gauge their current power in in the state. You know what I mean? But uh, like I said, it's hard to compete with the Tongos, even though they're not, you know, as as organized or as militant. When when, when you outnumber people ten to one, man, it's it's hard to overcome just your numbers, you know. But it looks like they use the same terminology that they use out there in AZ, which is Kinas. So those are like the those are like the foot soldiers, like like. How the Norteños are for the NF or the Sudanos are for the MA, they use the term skinas. But I wonder how that I wonder how they pick and, and, and recruit. Do they recruit people from these other groups like you know, I mean Barrio Azteca, Tri City Bombers, other neighborhoods, San Antonio, El Paso? I mean, it's kind of complex, man. There's a lot more groups. You know, people think California has a lot of Hispanic groups. I think Texas has a whole lot more different groups. I, that'd be kind of confusing. Yeah, Texas has a you know, for they're the second largest populous state, man. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of a lot of Latino people in Texas, man. So and everything's so spread out, you know, Houston to Dallas is, you know, it's pretty far. Houston to Austin, Houston to San Antonio, San Antonio to El Paso, Brownsville. They're all pretty spread out, man. So things are gonna develop, you know, out of you know, from the streets and you know, alliances are gonna be formed. And then, you know, you got two or three alliances on the streets, they're gonna identify with some particular group man so once once they get locked up but uh yeah bro texas is thick with with you know traditional prison gangs as well as you know the more modern people like the tongos and stuff you know they're they're deep bro they're deep and they all have a bite piece of the pie you know they're none of them no, are. we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to tap in and look at new mexico you know what i mean we're gonna have to do a little bit of research about them because i heard there's a lot of Norteños out there but i also heard that they have their own little faction that we're gonna break down in a, in a future segment man but i want to know how that faction where do they stand in, in the feds you know what i'm saying because you got to remember these are all, all all big latino uh uh communities yeah new mexico arizona california texas yeah, yeah they're huge you know very very huge everything along that border man you're going to be all brown you know 100 percent. and uh, things are going to form man you know um i the the least one i know about is new mexico you know i know a little bit about arizona you know a fair amount about texas and obviously california i got you know a, a pretty good understanding the different parts of arizona are different too man you have like if in, in, in more towards the the uh like in phoenix you have like you have some homegrown varios right out there you have a few Sudanio varios but you have homegrown varios they're just from they're from arizona tucson you have homegrown varios but you also have actually hispanics that are crips and bloods out there oh no doubt no. yeah there's a lot more i guess apparently there's a lot more bloods out there but there's a few crips and they speak spanish and everything you i know? wonder so how that transforms when they get locked up in state i don't know but you know what i mean um but they also have some rather, rather, you know, homegrown community. They have some Sudanos out there, but they also have like some uh, uh, very few Sudanos, not many. But they also have like homegrown varios out there that you know what I mean are just varios out there. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't really. Yeah, trip Phoenix on is a huge city too, man. There, it's actually there's a lot of population there. Oh yeah. You know, so they're gonna have their own style, own swag, own gangs. I mean, they're not gonna be totally influenced by California or you know, Texas or whatnot, they're going to be, they're going to have just the Arizona thing for sure. 
Oh well, yeah, I've, 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 I've been to I've been to both locations. You know what I mean? Both areas in. You know what I mean? I've I've, t- I've talked to a few people out that way. It's it's a whole different estilo. You know what I mean? They 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 don't bang sued. You know what I mean, there's sudeos out there, but they're mostly come from California, and so when they come into the system, they're allowed to be on the yard and coexist, but they don't run nothing. You know what I'm saying? It, the AZ cars run everything. That's just how it is. Makes sense. I don't know for sure. I'd like to know more. Anybody out there from? You know, any of these Texas groups, New Mexico, Arizona, get at us. We want to know. We're uh, we're interested. You know what I mean? So, uh, man, that'll do it about the Texas Mexican Mafia. Hopefully we learn more, especially, you know, current stuff. You know, I'm a couple years behind. But uh, appreciate you, YouTube, man. We'll probably be live tonight. And uh, have a good, productive Thursday. <laughs>